Hello again, Algebra 1 students. Uh, my name is Tim once again, and we're going to be going over the Unit 2 activity for Algebra 1A. And it's basically about functions. So let's go ahead and get to it. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And let's take a look at the activity. I hope you have it open already. Let's take a look at it. Um, go ahead and go to page five if you're not there already. But it says function representations. Go ahead and follow along as I read aloud. In this activity, you will use multiple representations to, of relationships to identify key features and solve problems. Ryan conducted a six-day study observing the effects of an organic plant food on the growth of his sprouting bean plant. He tracked these two pieces of information the amount of plant food remaining in the container after each day's feeding, and the height of the plant over time. Part A. Ryan found that the amount of plant food remaining decreased an equal amount each day, and he used the entire 72 milliliters by the end of his study. So what's kind of key here is that it was a six-day study. That's important. And the amount of plant food um, um you use the same amount each day. That's, that's important, a decrease an equal amount each day. And he used the entire 72 milliliters. So from that, we can tell how much he used each day. So how much plant food was used each day. So what we're gonna do is you take that 72 milliliters and you divide it amongst the six days. And that'll tell us how much he used each day. So in our case, that's going to be 12 mill milliliters of plant food used each day. So let's go ahead and now that hopefully that makes some sense, but let's go on to question one. It says, which statement is true about the relationship between the amount of plant food remaining and the number of days? So this is going to be a function because um, is a function because only one amount of plant food remains each day. So when it comes to functions, um, the amount that's left or the amount there is can't be repeated. And that's, that's key in functions. The output has to be different for each um, input for functions. Okay, so it's important that this is a function and only one amount of plant food remains each day. So let's go ahead and write a function that represents this. So how much plant food do we start off with? Well, if you remember from the problem, we start off with 72 milliliters. So we're just gonna put 72 here. And it uses 12 milliliters each day. So since it uses 12, we're gonna say, you're gonna take away 12 each day. So times however many days. It'll be 72 minus 12 X. That's gonna be our function there. So it starts off with 72 and you use up 12 times however many days. Okay, next one. Domain and range. So domain talks about the possible X values. Well, if we think about our problem, the X was the number of days. Well, how many days are we talking here? In the problem, it said six days. So we want our domain to be from zero day, from day zero to day six. So our domain is going to be this right here. Notice it's zero through six. It's the end of each day. The range are the results. So at day zero, he had 72 milliliters. And each day it used up 12. So it should count down by 12. So that's gonna be this range right here. Notice 72 is in it, and then down 12, for each of the six days that he does this experiment. Okay, so that's a domain and range in this case. I want you to notice that these are just straight up numbers. They're not like a range of numbers. It's not saying all numbers between zero and six. It's not saying that. It's saying these numbers specifically between zero and six. So there's no like fractional numbers. There's no like 1.7 or 2.33 or um, five fourths. So none of those are examples in the domain. So if you were to pick this, um, sorry, if you were to pick this one for the domain, 
this would be incorrect because this one includes all those fractions, but we don't want to include that in this case. Okay. Same thing for the range, same idea. So we don't want to, we don't want to pick this one for the range. We want to do just the discrete numbers. That's what we call just like a set of numbers. They're uh, a number is discrete like that. A discrete listing of numbers. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to plot the points. So in this one, for each of these in f of x, well, we can't really, I wish you could type in here, but we can't. But at day zero, how much uh, plant food do we have? Well, it was 72. So you can see the time is the days down here. And for day zero, we have 72 at day zero. And each day it uses 12 more. So after the first day, you're now down to 60. After the second day, you're down to 48. And I want you to go ahead and plot the other points. So it should be seven total points on the graph. So I want you to go ahead and finish up this graph. And again, each day it goes down by 12. The graph should show a linear relationship. They should show like a straight line of points. What does the x-intercept represent? So the x represent the x-intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. Well, we know it'll happen on day six, but what it represents is um, the length of time it takes. No, no, no. The length of time it takes for Ryan to use all the plant food, because at day six he'll have zero plant food. So after day six he'll have zero left, and so that represents when he runs out of plant food. Part B, Ryan also found that he could model the height of his plant with the equation H equals 0.5D plus four, where D is the number of days and H is the height in centimeters. So let's talk about this function here. So H again is the height, D is how many days. So its height is increasing 0.5 centimeters each day, it's in centimeters. So each day, the height is increasing by 0 0.5 centimeters, half a centimeter. And this plus four, well, the plus four is saying that's the starting height. So which statement is true about the relationship between the height of the plant and the number of days? Well, in this case, it's also a function. So we wanna do this relationship is a function. And again, it's because it can't repeat. So the function, because the plants can only be one height at a time. This second one is wrong because the saying could be more than one height at one time. A plant can't be more than one height at a given time. That doesn't make sense. Now, since we're talking about height, we want to talk about domain and range. But when we're talking about height, it increases through, right? So when you're talking about height, it's not discrete like we had before. This was discrete, a list of numbers. But height, height can be goes through, right? So it's not going to be discrete. So our domain, our domain is going to be, um, again, our domain is with the letter D, according to this function, 0.5D plus four. So our domain is from day zero to day six. And that's gonna be right here. Notice it's not discrete. So it's not a be a list like the other one. This is what we call not discrete. We call this continuous, continuous. Now the range, the starting height, again, our starting height was four. So we know our range has to start at four and it goes up from there. So that's going to be this one here. Okay. And you can see at day six, the resulting height will be seven. How do I know that? Well, if you plug in six into this function, it'll be 0 0.5 times six. And 0 0.5 times six, that's three. Three plus four is seven. So that's why the ending height here is seven. Question three. The height of the plant is given by this equation, h equals 0 0.5d plus four. Rewrite this as a function rule, f of x is the height, 
in centimeters and X is the time in days. Use the rule to complete the table and then use the drawing tool to create the graph representing this relationship. So let's go ahead and graph some points. We know at day zero, it'll be 0 0.5 times zero plus four. So 0 0.5 times zero is zero plus four is four. So at time zero, where you have a starting height of four. Okay. At time one, so at time one, we plug this in. 0 0.5 times 1 is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 plus 4 is 4.5. So at day 1, it's at 4.5. Well, I can't really graph that here. Maybe we'll go on to the next day. So at day 2, 0 0.5 times 2 is 1. 1 plus 4 is 5. So on day 2, we'll be at 5. And we could check at day 4. So it would be 0 0.5 times 4. And 0 0.5 times 4 is 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. So on day 4, we'll have a height of 6. So you can see we're forming a straight line here. Forming a straight line. And on day 6, we already talked about, day 6 gives you a height of 7. So right there. We're going to go ahead and use the line segment tool. So go ahead and click on the line segment tool here on the left. Click here. Um, click and drag like that. So it should look something like that. What does the y-intercept in this relationship represent? So the y-intercept is right here. But again, we talked about that plus four. What does it represent? It represents the starting height of the plant. So the initial height of the plant. Use your function rule to complete each statement. Type the correct answer in the box. Use numerals instead of words. After 3.5 days, the height of the plant is blank centimeters. So let me go and pull up a jam board here. And we can talk about how to figure this out. So again, our equation. Oh, come on. Delete. Clear. There we go. So our equation was H equals... 0 0.5 times however many days, D plus 4, the initial height. And again, this is in centimeters. So it asks, what will be the height after 3.5 days? So that 3.5 is going to represent, is going to replace D. So the number of days is 3.5 in this case. So it's going to be H equals 0 0.5 times, and again, we're replacing D with the correct number of days, which in our case is three and a half, 3.5. And there's still a plus four attached, so plus four. So what we're gonna do first, we're gonna multiply the 0 0.5 times 3.5. So what's that gonna be? 0 0.5 times 3.5 is 1.75. So we get 1.75 plus four, which in this case gives us 5.75. All right, so this gives us that height after 3.5 days. What was it again? 5.75, okay, 5.75. The next one says the height of the plant is 6.25 centimeters after how many days? So this time they give us the height and we need to figure out how many days. So our height is 6.25. So we're gonna use this equation again. But this time we're gonna replace the height with 6.25. And we need to figure out how many days that's going to be. So we got 0 0.5 times the number of days plus four. So our goal here is to solve for D. We want to get D by itself on the right hand of the equation, on the right side of the equation. So what we're going to do first is we're going to subtract 4. I'll get rid of that. Subtract 4 on the left side as well, because whatever you do on the one side of the equation, you have to do on the other. Well, that leaves us with 2.25, 6.25 minus 4 is 2.25 
equals, and on the other side, we have 0 0.5 D. Now, in order to get D by itself, notice it's 0 0.5 times D. So in order to cancel out that multiplication, we're gonna divide. Divide by 0 0.5. And whatever we do on one side of the equation, we have to do on the other. This will give us D equals, so we wanna do 2.25 divided by 0.5. Well, that gives us 4.5. So after 4.5 days, it'll have a height of 6.25. 4.5 days, it'll have a height of 6.25. Cool. Part C. Explain the similarities and differences between the two relationships in this situation. So the two situations we had was one, um, one of them was discrete, the other one was continuous. So that's gonna be one of the main differences we wanna put here. But one of the similarities is um, both of the relationships are functions. functions. And, and they both, have um, a linear relationship, meaning they both form lines. The first function was discrete. While the second was continuous. Pretty sure I spelled that wrong. No, I guess maybe it's right. Okay, then that's good to go. That's it. I hope that all made sense. Um, if you have any questions on any of this, um, feel free to email me. My email is T T R I G G at O F Y dot O R G. So if you have any questions, something that makes sense, you want to explain it deeper, whatever, feel free to email me anytime. Well, with that said, I will see you guys next time.